Hi, hello and welcome to another episode of Quick Histories. I'm Louise Quick, this is Quick Histories, and today we're going to be talking about the beautiful game. Is that right? Football. We're going to be talking about football and the fact that one of England's highest goal scorers of all time was actually a woman who ended up being condemned by the FA. So yeah, let's check it out. One of England's greatest goal scorers of all time was a lady called Lily Parr, who was a six foot tall chain smoking winger who had a notoriously powerful left foot. Over her 30 plus footballing career, she actually managed to score 900 goals. To put that into a little bit of context, I have been assured that Alan Shearer over his Premier League career scored 260 goals. However that is in his Premier League career, this is Lily Parr over her whole career, it's just a bit of context. And her 900 goals are even more impressive when you consider that the FA essentially banned women's football for the majority of her career. So it's important to know that women's football wasn't created in the 1990s, I know. Shocker. It actually has a very long history and was huge during World War I. This came about because you had all the men going off to fight and you had hundreds of thousands of women filling the factories to create ammunition. In fact, by 1918, something like 700,000 women had become munitionettes, creating munitions for the front line. It was while in these factories that the women started kicking a ball around during their breaks uh, and then very quickly started forming football teams and started playing competitively and drawing in large crowds. One such team that ended up sort of being the, the team to beat were the Dick Care Ladies. That's the Dick Care Ladies. Terrible name, but fantastic footballers. They were named after the factory where they worked, which was the Dick Care & Co munitions factory. They quickly became the team to beat, and by a Christmas game in 1917, they were drawing in crowds of about 10,000 and raising hundreds of pounds for charity. So this is where a very young Lily Parr comes in. She was headhunted by the Dick Care ladies in 1919, so just after World War I. So at 14 years old, she was already playing professional football and earning, earning something like 10 shillings a game, which is a half decent wage. And apparently she earned that money pretty quickly by scoring 43 goals in her first season. The most famous game which you may have heard of was when the Dick Care ladies played St. Helens at Goodison Park in Liverpool and the crowds of uh, 53,000 arrived or like in the stadium and there was another 10,000 outside. The Dick Care ladies also sort of became the first England's international team when they went and played in France and, um, and apparently were very successful. Beat lots of people, kicked balls into goals, scored goals, won, won games. So it's safe to say that women's football was very popular. The Dick Care ladies were doing very well and Lily Parr was sort of a rising star in all of this. However, in 1921, the FA came along and sort of ruined all of that by banning women from playing on FA affiliated pitches. The statement they issued said, The council feels impelled to express their strong opinion that the game of football is quite unsuitable for females and ought not to be encouraged. Not sure why I'm Maggie Smith in Downton Abbey. Essentially what this means is that the FA was pulling its support of women's football. It was essentially telling them like, right, you've had all these fun and games during World War I while the men have been off fighting, just back in your box, like you've had enough. Fortunately, the Dick Care ladies did exactly the right thing and just completely ignored this ban. And the following year, they actually went on a tour of America. But uh, without, without the FA support and funding and the grounds and everything that comes with it, the FA did sort of succeed in killing women's football. Well, almost. The Dick Care ladies did continue uh, under a new name of the Preston Ladies, however, weren't able to play professionally anymore. Lily Parr, for example, went and worked as a nurse um, in a local hospital. She actually continued as a winger for a long time. She became captain in the 1940s and didn't retire until 1951. She lived long enough to see the FA repeal its ban in 1971. Half a century later, the FA is like, all right, Women can play football, we suppose. Jump forward a good few decades, and last year, in 2019, Lily Parr actually became the first female footballer to be commemorated in a very significant, prominent sculpture, which was revealed, revealed, unveiled, at the National Football Museum. There are other women that the statue could have been of, but I think there's many reasons why I remember Lily Parr so well. Firstly, as a sporting icon, because she was so good at the game, she scored so many goals, and dedicated as well, and kept playing even despite the FA's rulings. She's also sort of a feminist icon in the sense that she defied what society were telling women they could and couldn't do. She's also become a bit of an LGBT plus icon 
because in the same sense, she also defied expectations of sexuality by living happily in an openly gay relationship with her partner, Mary. So yeah, she's just all round incredible woman who was like, I see what you're saying world, society. But no, I'm just going to do my own thing and she just wanted to play football and she did. There we go, that's a little bit of history about Lily Parr who I think everyone should know about because she's pretty damn awesome. I pop some links in the description so that you can find out more about Lily Parr if you would so like. Whether you're watching this on Instagram or on YouTube, give it a like or a thumbs up or whatever the form is on those platforms. Also um, tell me in the comments what history you would like to see covered with some history facts. Uh, whether that's an era or a person. Otherwise, I'm off to listen to the Bendelite Beckham soundtrack and say that it's football research. History fact.